ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ಬಾಲ ಭಿರಿಡ್ ಬರಧ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ಬಾಲ ಭಿರಿಡ್ ಬರಧ ಯಶೋದ ನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದ ನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಾಮುನ ತೀರ ಬನ ಚಾರಿ ಯಾಮನ ತೀರ ಬನ ಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಬಾಲ ಭಿರಿ ಬರಧ ಗೋಪಿ ಜಾನ ಬಾಲ ಭಿರಿ ಬರಧ ಯಶೋನ ನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದ ನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಾಮುನ ತೀರ ಬನ ಯಾಮನ ತೀರ ಬನ ಚಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. नित्य गोर हरि बो हरि बो हरि बो नित्य गोर हरि बो जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय गोर प्रेमनंदे जय ओम विष्णुपाद परमहंस परिब्रज आचार्य अष्टतर सत श्री श्रीमद his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedan Swami, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. His confounder Acharya, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda Ki. Nam Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki. Yeah. Prem Shigo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Ki Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shyam Kund Radha Kund Giri Govardhan Ki Vrindavan Mayapur Dham Ki Ganga Maya Yamana Maya Ki Tosi Maharani Bhakti Devi Ki Hari Nam Sankirtan Ki Shri Gaur Purnima Mahotsava Ki all oh, glories assembled devotees, all oh, glories assembled devotees, all oh, glories assembled devotees, all oh, glories Sri Guru, Sri Gauranga, all oh, glories Srila Prabhupada. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda. Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vinda In Chaitanya Charitamrita Krishna Das Kaviraj gives 14 verses as the invocation to his uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. 14 verses and first six are all in relation to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then there are five verses glorifying Lord Nityananda. 
There's two verses of Advaita Acharya and one of the Panchatattva. So Chaitanya Charitamrita begins very interesting manner by offering respects to the d six different features of the Supreme Lord. <clears throat> Bande Gurun Isha Bhaktan Ishan Isha Avatarakan Taj Prakatam Stachach Prakti Krishna Chaitanya Samgyakam. Krishna Das Kaviraj begins describing the six different features of the Lord. First of all, he says, Mandi Gurun offers obeisances to the spiritual teachers. Plural form. Mandi Gurun, not one, but many gurus. So that's a very important point to be noted. Uh, Bande Gurun Isha Bhaktan, then he offers respects to the devotees. And then to touch Prakashams, to the plenary portions of the Lord. And then to the Lord's incarnations. Then to the Lord's different potencies. And then finally to the Supreme Lord himself. So we want to look at these different features, how we understand the Supreme Absolute Truth. First of all, this, the spiritual master. We said not one, but many. There is the instructing spiritual masters and there are the initiating spiritual masters. We should only have one initiating spiritual master, but there should be many instructing spiritual masters. Generally, the process is, first of all, take instruction. And from the different people giving instructions, one person would become more prominent, and that person would become the initiating spiritual master. So Krishna does Kaviraj identifies his instructing spiritual masters. He says the six Goswamis of Vrindavan are all his instructing spiritual masters. And he offers his respects to them. We should understand that the instructing spiritual master and the initiating spiritual master are of equal position. We don't give more importance to the instructing spiritual master and less position to the initiating, or we don't give more to the initiating and less to the instruction. They are equal. They are equal manifestations because they are representing the message of the Supreme Lord. Srila Prabhupada describes the spiritual teachers as the supreme personality of servitor Godhead, teaching how to serve the Lord through their instructions, by hearing. If you hear regularly from someone with faith, we should understand that is an indication that we're taking instruction from them. Nowadays in ISKCON, we don't have any formal process of accepting someone as an instructing spiritual master. Some devotees may do it on their own. They may recognize that this person is my shiksha guru and along with their diksha guru, they may also worship their shiksha guru like when they're offering or when they're uh, celebrating the, the Vyasa Pujas and so on, they may recognize their instructing spiritual masters. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj quotes a verse uh, that nobody should ever envy 
the spiritual master. Acharyamam vijaniyam navivam yita karechit. Right? We should consider the spiritual master to be the manifestation of the Supreme Lord. But at the same time, the spiritual teacher should never consider himself to be the Supreme Lord. Spiritual teacher should always be very humble and show the humility of the Vaishnava. But the disciple, in their mind at least, they should understand, they should respect the spiritual teacher to be a manifestation of the Lord. And in this way, offer all respect to him. Uh, they, they asked Prabhupada, Oh, there was, there was one lady came, she, her son had become a devotee and so she came to the program one morning and she saw the devotees doing Guru Puja and how they all offered flowers and bowed down to Prabhupada. So after the program she had the opportunity to meet Srila Prabhupada and she said to him, she said, Oh, I, I, I see your disciples worship you. And Prabhupada looked at her and said, Yes, and I also worship my spiritual master. So that's an important point to be understood. That whatever worship we offer to the spiritual teacher, he offers to his spiritual master. It is not for himself. Just like when people take sannyas, initially sometimes it's a little difficult because everywhere you go people are respecting you and bowing down to you. So one time there was one young man took sannyas and he came back to Prabhupada and he said to Prabhupada, he said, Prabhupada, I don't like this. Everyone is respecting me and bowing down to me. And Prabhupada said to him, they're not respecting you, they're respecting what you represent. So that is the system, that when we offer respects to the spiritual teacher and to sannyasis, it's not that we're actually respecting the person, but rather what they represent is being respected. So Krishna Das Kaviraj begins his Chaitanya Charitamrita by offering his respects to all the spiritual teachers. Bandegarun Isha Bhaktan. Then he offers respects to the devotees. Devotees like Srivas Pandit whose home is just down the road at the yoga, near the yoga peak, where Lord Chaitanya inaugurated nocturnal kirtan. So Srivas Pandit, he is considered to be the expansion of Narada Muni. And he's a great devotee. There are different kinds of devotees. It's explained there are the Parishat, meaning the eternal associates of the Lord, and there are the sadhakas. We are all, I would imagine, we are all sadhakas, right? Are any of you eternal personal associates of the Lord? Unlikely. We're not quite ready for that. But we're on the path. That is the, the goal what we want to achieve. We want to become the personal associates of the Lord. Of course, if we were more advanced, we would think, I'm already associating with the Lord by chanting his holy name. And when we go to see the deities, then we're also associating with the Lord. The pujaris, for example, they associate with the Lord in his deity form. So different devotees, different levels of devotees, those who are sadhakas, we are progressing 
we're on the path of spiritual progress. And then, Bande Gurun Isha Bhaktan Ishan Ish Avatarakam, avatars. In the Panchatattva, we have Advaita Acharya. Advaita Acharya is the incarnation of the Lord. He is considered to be incarnation of Mahavishnu or Sadashiva. There are different kinds of incarnations described. We have partial incarnations like the Purusha avatars who are responsible for creation, Mahavishnu, Garbhodakashaya Vishnu, Shirodakashaya Vishnu. These are all partial incarnations. Then Matsya avatar is also mentioned as a partial incarnation. There are qualitative incarnations. Qualitative incarnations mean personalities like Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva. And there are also manifestations of the authority of the Lord or empowered incarnations. For example, Prithu Maharaj, the four Kumaras, Veda Vyas, they are described to be empowered incarnations of the Lord. So in this way, different avatars are described. Then, touch prakashams, the plenary portions of the Lord. Lord Nityananda is a plenary portion of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just as Balaram also expands from Lord Krishna, they're considered non-different. So plenary portions and then the Shakti or the potencies of the Lord. In other words, the Lord's consorts. In Chaitanya Lila, the Lord's consort is Gadarhar Pandit. Gadarhar Pandit is the in, at the expansion of Srimati Radharani coming to take part in Chaitanya Lila. But in, Krishna, in, in, in relation to the spiritual world, we have the goddesses of fortune, Lakshmis, in the spiritual world, in Vaikuntha. And we have also Krishna's wives in Dwarka. And we have also the gopis in Krishna's Rasa Lila. So these are all examples of the different potency of the Lord, the, sh the Shakti of the Lord through his different consorts. And then uh, there's the Lord himself, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu how he appears in different forms. There is Prakash and there are Vilas forms of the Lord. The Prakash forms are where the Lord expands in the same, exactly the same features, exactly the same. Just like when Lord Krishna married 16,000 wives in Dwarka, at that time, he expanded himself into 16,000 and each form was the same. Each form was identical. So that is Prakash. Another example is when Krishna danced Rasa Lila in Vrindavan with the gopis. At that time, Lord Krishna could appear with each of the gopis. Of it said one gopi on each side, but the same Krishna was expanded with all the gopis. So each gopi thought, 
she was dancing with Krishna. Each of the expansions were identical. So that is Prakash expansions. And then there is Vilas, Vilas expansions. Just like we said, Lord Balaram, a little different. Although he's identical to Krishna, there's a difference in color. Balaram's white and Krishna's blackish. There are some distinctions there. And then Lord Narayan. Lord Narayan is also non-different from Lord Krishna. But Lord Narayan is the forearm form. And Lord Krishna is the two-arm form. So there's a distinction there. And similarly also Chaturvyuha. The Sankarshan, Anirud, Prajumna, Vasudev, the Chaturvyuha. This is another example of the Lord in Vilas expansion. So these are the six different features of the Absolute Truth. When we come before the Panchatattva in the temple, a number of devotees will recite the Pranam mantra to Panchatattva. Panchatattva makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupakam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam. So again, the different features of the Absolute Truth are being described. We have the spiritual teachers, we have the devotees, we have the incarnations, the plenary portions, the Shakti or the consorts of the Lord and the Supreme Lord Himself. In this way we understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that is the first verse of Chaitanya Charitamrita, which is discussed in the first chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur said that once he read Chaitanya Charitamrita, it was only then that he began to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada would often describe Chaitanya Charitamrita as the postgraduate study. Srimad Bhagavatam is a graduate study and Chaitanya Charitamrita postgraduate study. So reading the Chaitanya Charitamrita is very important for us. We may think, oh I'm a neophyte. I'm not ready yet to read Chaitanya Charita. But in the very beginning of our movement, Srila Prabhupada was already giving classes on Chaitanya Charitamrita. So we shouldn't think, oh, I'm not qualified. Rather, we will become qualified by reading, by hearing. So Chaitanya Charitamrita. Is very important for us. Prabhupada had given that for us, for all the devotees to read. We should think, we have to read all of Prabhupada's books, every book. And we not only read them, we should know them. Sometimes devotees are a bit slack in these things. We don't take much time to read. It's very nice to hear how many devotees are giving classes nowadays on books like Chaitanya Charitamrita. And it's very helpful for devotees who may not read, they hear. So the senior devotees can preach, they can speak about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and read from Chaitanya Charitamrita and explain the leelas and the topics which are being presented there. And in this way, other devotees will become more inspired to also read Chaitanya Charitamrita. And not only Chaitanya Charitamrita, we want to read also Chaitanya Bhagwat. I was quite 
surprised recently I was on a parikrama and we were we went to Vrindavan Das Thakur's uh, place where he had written Chaitanya Bhagwat, a place called Delor. It's not far away from Champahati. So they have the original Chaitanya Bhagwat there, which he had written on palm leaves. Anyway, we, we asked the devotees who were with us, how many of you have read Chaitanya Bhagwat? And practically no one had read. So it's important for us as followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to know what is his teachings, what were his lila, what were his pastimes. So Chaitanya Bhagwat, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Mangal, these are the three main books. Of course, Srila Prabhupada just gave us Chaitanya Charitamrita. But in many purports, he will refer. He will say, for example, a pastime will be described, and Prabhupada will write in the purport, this pastime is described extensively in the Chaitanya Bhagwat, and he will say, where in the Chaitanya Bhagwat? Is it in Adikanda, Majamkanda, or Anchakanda? And which chapter is it in? So Prabhupada gave us this information. In other words, he's encouraging us that we will also refer and read these books and know more about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in the second verse of Chaitanya Charitamrita, the invocation, Krishna Das Kaviraj goes on to describe, Bande Shri Krishna Chaitanya San Nityanando Sahodito Gododaye Pushpavanto Chitro Samotamanudo. In this verse, Chaitanya and Nityananda are compared to the sun and the moon. And Krishna Das Kaviraj describes how the sun and the moon have appeared together simultaneously in order to bless everyone's heart and dissipate the darkness of ignorance. Just like the sun and the moon, when they come up, then we can observe different physical objects clearly. So in the same way, but the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda, this, this not only takes away the, the external darkness, but it, it puts light in our heart. It takes away the ignorance from our heart because our hearts are full of identification with the material world, with sense gratification. We want to give up that attachment to sense gratification. By the mercy of Mahaprabhu, then we can remove that ignorance from the heart. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda came to give the, ch the chanting of the holy names. Kali Yuga Dharm Hari Nam Sankirtan Krishna Shakti Vini Nahi Tara Pravartan So, the holy name is the incarnation of the Lord in the Kali Yuga. And Krishna Das Kaviraj describes that these two lords, Chaitanya and Nityananda, have appeared just like the sun rises on Godadesh, the, as the sun rises this land of Bengal, this is called Godadesh. We are the Godia Vaishnavas. So this land is Godadesh. And when the sun and the moon rise, then the darkness is removed. In the, in the same way, with the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda, the darkness of ignorance is removed from our hearts by taking the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to heart. The message was that we should study the books about Krishna. We should read 
the books about Krishna. We should chant the holy name and we should worship Krishna. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, to give the chanting of the holy names to everyone without considering who is qualified and who is not. It's quite a distinction between Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in Christianity, Lord Jesus Christ died for the sins of his believers. But we see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he wants to give Krishna consciousness to everyone, to all living entities. When he's going through the forest of Jarakanda, the wild animals are given the holy name. And they also chant and dance and embrace each other and awaken love of God. What to speak of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? There were great Vaishnava devotees like Rashikananda, who was a disciple of Shamananda Pandit. Rashikananda, he initiated an elephant. There was a mad elephant destroying a village. And at that time, Rasikananda was preaching to some, you know, some really nasty man who was not, he was an atheist actually, and he said to Rasikananda, he said, if you can stop this elephant from destroying the village, then I will believe what you say. So Rasikananda said, all right. So he went out there. And he approached the elephant and chanted the holy name into the ear of the elephant and the elephant fell at his feet. And so he initiated the elephant, Gopal Das, and he became a nice devotee. And you always come to see Rasikananda and offer obeisances to him. So empowered devotees, they will give Krishna consciousness to everyone. Prabhupada called one devotee, it was in Los Angeles, it was one of my god brothers, Nara Narayan Prabhu. So Prabhupada called him, he said, you see this insect on the table? He said, oh Prabhupada, do you want me to get it out of here? He said, I want you to think how to give it Krishna consciousness. This, this is the mood of the Vaishnavas, give Krishna consciousness to all living entities. Right? Prabhupada was in Australia and the devotees arranged the program for him at some uh, monastery. There was a monastery, there were uh, monastic monks and they were following St. Francis, so the Franciscan monastery. And the monks there told Srila Prabhupada about St. Francis. They told him how St. Francis used to address the trees as my dear sister tree, my dear sister flower, like this, he saw, he saw all the different living entities as his brother and sister. And when Srila Prabhupada heard that, Prabhupada told the monks, he said, oh, he said, that is real God consciousness. So we want to understand what is God consciousness, right? So it's explained for us by hearing the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from the life and from the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu we can understand God consciousness on the highest level. Chaitanya Charitamrita continues in the third verse Yada Dvaitam Brahmo Panishad Asya Yada Dvaitam Brahmo Panishad uh, the absolute truth is understood in three features. What the, what the Upanishads call the impersonal Brahman is but his impersonal feature of the absolute truth. And the Paramatma, the Lord in the hearts of all living entities, is his all-pervading feature. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Full, of him, full in all opulencies, and he is none other than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the absolute truth is understood in these three different features. There is the impersonal, all-pervading Brahman, there is the 
localized Paramatma and there is the Supreme Lord himself. This Leonard transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non-dual substance Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. This is Srimad Bhagavatam. So Chaitanya Charitamrita describes that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he is also displaying the features of Bhagavan, all opulencies. We see in Mahaprabhu the ultimate renunciation. As a sannyasi, he was the most strict sannyasi. Very strict in his of course, he took sannyas in the line of Shankaracharya, in the, that line. And the tradition in that line is that the sannyasis are very strict. Some South Indian lady told me that the custom is before you can even go in a room where a sannyasi is from the line of Shankaracharya, the lady must wear a full sari. Full sari means the the entire body is covered. And they will never come close. They will sit at the back of the room. They can never come near to the Mayavadi sannyasi. That is the custom in Shankaracharya line. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he strictly followed all of these principles of renunciation. And he displayed all the other opulences of Bhagavan as well. Of course, he was complete in knowledge. No one could argue or defeat him. We know there's a pastime described in Chaitanya Charitamrita how Balabhacharya had raised a doubt. He said that you're all chanting the holy name of the Lord, but the living entities are Purusha. We're not Purusha, the Lord is Purusha, we're Prakriti. So we're all feminine in relation to the Lord. So it's the duty of a wife never to say the name of a husband. Just like Mother Sita never uttered the name of Lord Rama. This sometimes surprises people, you know. <laughs> if you try to introduce this culture into people from outside the Vedic culture, they're shocked. They say, ah, how can I talk to my husband? <laughs> you should simply say, my Prabhu, or my husband. Right? You address your husband in that manner. That is the Vedic culture. They will never utter the name of their husband. So Balabha Acharya was saying, we are all the Prakriti and the Lord is the Purush. We shouldn't be chanting his name. So the devotees looked at Balabha Acharya and said, just you wait. The Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the personification of all religious principles. When he comes, he will answer your doubt. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, the question was raised. How can we chant the name of the Lord? He said, we are supposed to be chaste wives. We shouldn't say the name of our husband. Mahaprabhu said, it is the duty of the wife to follow the order of her husband. And the Lord has ordered that we should all chant his holy name. And so this way, Balabhacharya was rebuked. <laughs> no, we have to chant. You get these kind of people that come up with these kind of philosophies. In the time of Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Bhakti Siddhanta, there was a Babaji who was also propagating this kind of thinking. But don't chant the holy name, just chant in your mind. You shouldn't chant the name of the Lord aloud. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said, well look, Rupa Goswami, was a personal witness to the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He had personally been with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he has described the activities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Chaitanastikam. 
And in the Chaitanya Astika, Amrupa Goswami has written that Mahaprabhu loudly chanted the holy name of the Lord. So well, how is it you can say we don't chant the name? And some people say, oh, no, don't do kirtan of the holy name. But kirtan is more important than japa. It's kirtan where we get the greatest mercy of the holy name. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had everybody chant in kirtan. But we also chant japa as well. We also chant the holy name. Both are encouraged. And you can do it loudly. Haridas Thakur, Kolaveka Sridhar, they were all loudly chanting the holy name. There was no question of silently, in the mind, no. Prabhupada used to tell us, the louder you chant, the more powerful it becomes. So the chanting of the holy name, very important in the Kali Yuga, it's the only way. In other ages, there's other processes as well, but in the Kali Yuga, only the chanting of the holy name. So then, Krishna Das Kavira goes on to describe about the appearance of the Lord, that he has come to establish the Yuga Dharma. This is the external reason for the appearance of the Lord that he has come to establish the Yuga Dharma. He wants to give Krishna consciousness to everyone through Sankirtan. And that was the main activity of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sometimes he would be alone, he would go chanting, just like in Benares. When he went to Benares, all the Mayavadi sannyasis were there, headed by Prakashananda Sarasati, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, what is he doing? He's chanting and dancing, alone. He was on his own doing Sankirtan. Sometimes he would be on his own, other times he would have many people, just like we know in Jagannath Puri. When he came back to Jagannath Puri, then there will be many devotees all chanting with him. And we hear about the wonderful kirtans, particularly when the devotees would come from Bengal. They would all come, led by Shivananda Singh, and they'd come and they would stay for four months in Jagannath Puri. They'd come in time for the Rathiyatra, and they would stay for the whole of Kartik, and after Kartik, then they'd come back to Bengal. So, and what were they doing? Every day, kirtan, there would be chanting of the holy name. There would be Krishna Kata, discussion on the topics of Krishna. So as devotees, we have to understand how to be a devotee. What is our sadhaka? The main sadhaka is to avoid the association of non-devotees. Right. How to recognize a devotee? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was asked, how can we recognize a devotee? He immediately replied, Asad Sangha Tyag, E Vaishnavachar, Stri Sangha, Ekasadu, Krishna Bhakti R. The devotee will give up the association of the Asat. He gives up the association of materialistic minded people. People who are just interested in sense gratification. We don't need that association. And we don't also need to associate with people who have no faith in Krishna consciousness. We want to have full faith in the process. And if you associate with people like impersonalists and jnanis, they may doubt the power of the holy name. They doubt the words of the acharyas. So that kind of association is no good. It is not for devotees. Satam prasanga mama virya samvido bhavantirit karana rasayana kata. 
tis joshina jas apavargavat mani shridharatir bhaktir anukramishyati. This is a very important verse for us as devotees. It's described by Lord Kapila to his mother Devahuti in Srimad Bhagavatam. The topics of Lord Krishna when heard in the association of devotees are very pleasing to the ear and to the heart. So this is the business of devotees, to give pleasure to the ear. We get pleasure by hearing topics of Krishna. And from the ear, it should go to the heart. It shouldn't go out the other ear. It, must, it should go to the heart. We want to keep that message in the heart. Th this reminds us we have to associate with not, we said, we, we give up the association of non-devotees. Who do we associate with? We associate with the Bhagavat devotees. There are two Bhagavats. There is the book Bhagavat and the devotee Bhagavat, the person Bhagavat. We want that kind of association. When you get mediocre association, then that will give that will help to come to anartha nivritti but when you get the higher association then you that association will give us nishta and ruchi it will be a higher level of devotion we can experience when we're hearing different devotees how it's not all on the same level some devotees have higher realizations than others and it will help to elevate our level of Krishna consciousness. So we want to associate with the Bhagavad devotees, hearing topics of Krishna. So on this day, Gaur Purnima, we want to take advantage to hear and chant as much as we can. We want to utilize every minute in the service of Krishna. Of course, you have to go to Ganga, take bath there, on this day, this is one day you've got to go to Ganga, take bath. We have to also keep ourselves absorbed in the nectar of the holy name. So, one, so many wonderful kirtaniers are here. And when we're not hearing the kirtan, then chant japa and remember Krishna. Okay, are there any questions? Yes. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Well, that's a wonderful class. Maharaj, I had one doubt, uh, not doubt, rather question that whether this chanting upon beats, this process had been introduced by Mahaprabhu himself or it was introduced by Slarupa Goswami. This question. Oh, was the process in chanting on beads, was it introduced by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Rupa Goswami? <laughs> well, you know, they're not the only ones to chant on beads. You see, Lord Brahma also has beads. Lord Shiva also has beads. There's a lot of people using beads, you know. It's not a new thing. And even the Buddhists also, they're also using beads, chanting. The Buddhists, they have 108 beads also. One time I asked a Buddhist man, why 108? He said, 108 miseries. <laughs> That's the Buddhist philosophy, right? But the people become Buddhists to end the misery of material life. So the different beads represent the different miseries of material existence. Of, of course, for us as devotees, our 108 beads are 108 gopis, or 108 books, like the Upanishads. So different things. So it's not a new thing, no. It's timeless, it's an age-old thing. In Gaudiya Sampradaya, 
Well, before Gaudiya Sampradaya was Madhva Sampradaya, all right? Mahaprabhu took initiation in the line of Madhva. Do the Madhvas also chant? Yeah, they are also chanting, yes. You see they also chant. They have beats, they will chant. I mean, they don't do it, it's not a major part of their sadhana, but they do it. Certainly they do it. They're more, some like Sri Vaishnavas, they will also chant, but they're more into puja. They worship all these deities. And Madhva, all, Madhva what are they doing? You know, we, see, we do see the chanting is always encouraged, it's always encouraged. It's just people just don't do it. But they, they know it's good, they just can't do it because it was never emphasized. But it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who emphasized Kalo nasteva 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 gatiranyatar. There's no other way in the Kali Yuga but the holy name. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was mainly preaching kirtan, getting people to chant kirtan. And the kirtan is very important. But when the kirtan finishes, then you chant on the beats. So chanting. Just like when we take initiation, the vow is to chant on the beats. But we're encouraged as much as possible, join the kirtan. Take part in kirtan. It's very, very powerful. And from kirtan, then we will get more taste to chant on beats, to do our japa. If you don't have taste to chant on beat, you'll get that taste by doing more kirtan and hearing the philosophy. It will help to develop that taste. Thank you so much, Mahesh. It was, it was talking about to read this Chaitanya Bhagavat. I wanted to ask you which, which traduction now is like uh, good for us to read. Which, which traduction or which Chaitanya Bhagavat is, is nice because like I know we don't have in, in BVT this book. You don't have Chaitanya Bhagavat? In, in BVT. In BVT? Yeah, uh, which, tra which translation can be nice for us because it's hundreds also. Like. Yes, there are different editions. The, there's there's one with the purports, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati give purports to the Chaitanya Bhagavat. You can find that in uh, the edition which was published by Pundarik Vijaniri Prabhu, who was a Prabhupada disciple. He used to live in Vrindavan, he went back to America. He's living, he got married and moved back to America. So, but he published it. Chaitanya Bhagavat with all the purports of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. So it's a very good edition, but there are other briefer editions. Sometimes people give summaries. There's a good edition by Sarva Bhavna Prabhu, who himself is Bengali, and he's also a pr Prabhupada disciple, and he wrote, wrote a very scholarly, nice edition of Chaitanya Bhagavat. So there are different editions there. Yeah. Yes, managers have their hands. Give the mic. Oh. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, you mentioned about the, by reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, we can understand Sriman Bhagavatam. Uh, but usually uh, we are instructed to first read Bhagavad Gita, then Bhagavatam, and last Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yes, that is the program that we read first the Bhagavad Gita. But I said also Prabhupada was giving lectures on the Chaitanya Charitamrita in the very beginning of our movement. So Prabhupada was encouraging us to hear about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his pastimes. So you may, people may find it a little difficult in the beginning but just like Srimad Bhagavatam, you, it's also difficult in the beginning. But if you, you can also read Chaitanya Charitamrita side by side, it will be help. Many things are explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which we don't find so well eas or so easily in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So we do encourage devotees, read. 
Read some Chaitanya Charitamrita, read some Bhagavatam, read also Bhagavad Gita. Of course, if you have a good basis in the Bhagavad Gita, that will help. But even you didn't, you can still hear Srimad Bhagavatam, you can still study. We have to, we have to keep reading, keep hearing. So Srimad Bhagavatam, yeah, we, say, we say that's a graduate study, Chaitanya Charanita, postgraduate, but no harm to read, to keep reading, hearing. Yes. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for your association. Uh, my question starts from association referring to your um, saying. You said we have to associate with uh, devotees and avoid non-devotees. But what if our family members and our friends and the people we work with are non-devotees? So how can we avoid those association, association with them, Prabhu? Yes, how do we avoid association when we're brought up in a family who are not devotees? Yes, Prabhu. And Working maybe also a job with many yes. non-devotees, so you have that problem, yes? Well, we have to know how to associate with devotees. When we associate with devotees, it will be more intimate, just like there are loving exchanges between one devotee and another. Inquiring confidentially and revealing your mind in confidence, Offering prasadam, accepting prasadam, offering gifts in charity, accepting charity, charitable gifts. These kind of loving exchanges take place between devotees. People who are not devotees, we wouldn't like to accept their food. They're not devotees. They're probably meat eaters. Are we going to accept their food? No, no we don't, right. No. Be polite about it, but just tell them, sorry, I have a special diet, you know. So it's difficult, we know, but gradually people will get used to it and they will respect it. They will come to respect that you have, your, you have principles which you follow and you keep them. So that's good. They should respect it. You know, if, if they're actually your friends, then they will respect you for it. Thank you, Prabhu. It's always difficult. Many, many devotees in this situation, sometimes it's very difficult. For example, your husband. You may have a husband who's not a devotee, or maybe it's the husband's a devotee, wife's not a devotee. Then it's really difficult. But still, somehow they manage. If, if, the, you know, if the other party is tolerant, you know, you, and you have to also be a little gentle and yeah. willing to help them. Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna, thank you for a very nice lecture. I would like to have some clarification on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <clears throat> I hear different things that sometimes that he's Krishna in the mood of Radha, Rani, and sometimes that he's Krishna and Radha combined. What is the proper yes. understanding? Yes, okay. So, we say Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahiyanya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a combined form of Radha and Krishna. But he, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he comes to experience the mood of Srimati Radharani. So his bhava, Radha Bhava Jyoti Suvalitam, in Chaitanya Charitamrita is described like this, that Krishna, you have to understand, Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. He wants to enjoy, but he saw that Srimati Radharani is enjoying herself millions of times more than he is. So he wanted to experience that pleasure which Srimati Radharani had. Now Radha and Krishna are one, but they separated themselves eternally. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes. Now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna. But he's come, he wants to experience the mood of Radha. Hare Krishna, that is what I have also understood. But then yesterday, for example, we heard uh, from His Holiness Lokanath uh, Swami that Ekatma, they, go, they combine again, they are combined in 
in yes. the Mahaprabhu's Swarup. So, is it, would it be correct to say that Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna in Radhara, Srimata Radharani's mood, or is it only Krishna in Srimata Radharani's mood? Well, you, you cannot separate Radha and Krishna. Radha, can we say Radha enters into Krishna? Well, at least the mood of Radha enters into Krishna. We do say that, some commentators do say like that, that Radha and Krishna have again become one in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But at the same time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna. Now sometimes he will be in different moods, just like when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in household of life. You know, he's not in the mood of Radha. When he was married, you know, when he had Lakshmi Priya or Vishnu Priya, his wives, that he was not in the mood of Srimati Radharani then. At that time, it's more Narayan feature, and those were his Shaktis. But later on, as after taking initiation and chanting mantra from Ishwara Puri, then he awakened his bhava for Krishna. He went to Kanaina Sala and he had some experience there and he came back to Navadvi and his, more, his, his bhava for Krishna was aroused. He, he changed. He, it wasn't the same. He had his vidya, he had his scholarship lila, but then he has, uh, now it's after that, then it's come to this bhava and prema, awakening of love of God. And he wants to experience the mood of Srimati Radharani. So, we say Radha Bhava, that he's, the, the emotion of Radha is there in him. He's Krishna, but with the mood of Srimati Radharani. So you could say that they enter, that, that mood of Radha entered into him. Thank you. Okay, yes. Have we got time? What time is it? Okay. What, what time is Darshan? Oh, really? Okay, we should stop here. Now it's time for Darshan. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Karamo De 